<laughs> we have found ourselves, Ian, Mr. Ian, Martin, Allison, and myself have found ourselves in this beautiful bass shop. And it's full of Rickenbackers and Hoffners and jazz basses and all of that kind of shenanigans. Now with that, we thought it would be a cool idea to do a video, a lesson, focusing on, well, what are we focusing on, Ian? Paul McCartney's amazing bass lines. Because we think that Paul McCartney is one of the most underrated bass players ever. Now, before we showcase these bass lines, which are incredible, by the way, just a quick note to say, Ian, frankly, is in love with this bass. Oh, it's unreal. This has captivated yeah. the room. Jim's in love with it behind the camera. I'm right? in love with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a late 60s Rickenbacker 4005. And I know, we know that Paul McCartney didn't play a Rickenbacker 4005, but it has this beautiful vintage toaster pickup slammed right up against the neck. It's got this really lovely warm sound with a pick. And we thought, why not? And then Scott has, I believe this is a late 70s, 4001. Dude, even better than that, it's a 78. Year of our birth! <laughs> 78. <laughs> Rickenbacker, 4001, right? Yeah. Um, which McCartney did play one of these, right? He did. Yeah, yep. he played one of these. And then we've also got sitting down here, we've got this beautiful Hofner, which is just incredible, obviously. It's actually, is this a reissue? It's a, it's a replica, right? I think that's right, I think it is, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've got a jazz bass there as well, right? Yeah, and this is, I believe, a 66 jazz bass blocks and binding uh, with the paddle keys or lily pads or lollipops the tuners, and Paul played something like this, 67, 68 jazz bass, I believe, yeah. on Abbey Road. We've got it back here. Oh, amazing bass. Yeah, so we're gonna be going through these bass lines, and if you want to, we've actually put all of the tab notation together for you as well. So we've put together a free PDF workbook. It's completely free. Now, the first bass line we're jumping into is Dear Prudence. Yeah. And Let's we're going to show you verse two on Dear Prudence. And really, it's an unbelievable example of playing the chord tones and the upper extensions of what the chord is doing. So Scott is going to play like the guitar chords on this Rickenbacker here. I'll play the bass line and I'll show you what he could have done. And then we'll show you what he did. Yes. And Paul could have played. <laughs> right? Yeah. That would have been a perfectly fine bass line to play. But instead... Because he's a badass. Yeah, I know. Because he's a badass, he actually starts with the five. That is incredible. I love that he starts with the five. It's really cool. If you don't know what we're talking about there, right? Most bass players, I play a D, you play a... D. A D, a root. Yes. Not Paul. No. Jim's saying he played it on the Hoffner. <laughs> Hoffner. Uh, we apologize. We know that there's a lot of people watching this right now just going, play the Hoffner. <laughs> hey, if you stick around to the end of the video, we might play the Hoffner. <laughs> okay, so he's, I'm playing D. Yeah. Okay, you play, you play A. Yeah. So the bass line starts, starts on an on A. a. Yeah. yeah. Also, Paul puts this cool space in between it. Before he moves down. What do you mean by that space? Show me. So that. instead of this, when, when I play this, I want to play. But he plays space before he goes to the C. I'll slow it down. Ah. So, so those are a little a short. Of, I call that like, yeah, there's a bit of air in between. Yeah, yeah, a bit of daylight. Bit of daylight, that's <laughs> it. A bit of daylight in between the two, yeah. Keep going. <laughs> right, let's do get on to the uh, the next one. So the next one is <gasps> Day Tripper, dudes. Oh. Day Tripper, here we go. I have been playing Day Tripper forever, completely wrong. Same. I've always. Yep. Ah. 
John Lennon had the initial idea, writes Jim. Cheers, Jim. John Lennon. Oh, I, for some reason I thought it was George. I'm learning. I'm learning as well. Well, in this video, it's Paul. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I mean, Scott and I both played this here, and what an amazing riff, yeah. right? Killer. God damn, that bass sounds insane. <laughs> <laughs> what a great riff, right? But Paul doesn't play it down there. He plays it up here, and I always played it. Then, once I found that out, I thought, oh, okay, you'd play it this way. But I saw a video of Paul playing this live and he actually gets that third thing happening there. So what a great device. This is such a cool blues device where you're playing an E, you're playing the flat third and then the major third, right? And even just getting that. Oh, so you'll notice Scott picked up the amazing Hofner bass. Yeah. Okay, next up, next up, we've got <gasps> something. This is maybe his best bait. For me, it might be the best. It's unbelievable, yeah. this bass line. It's so beautiful. And I believe, Jim can fact check this, but I'm gonna say this is George Harrison. George Harrison wrote this tune. Now, I don't know if he wrote the bass line, but I believe this is a George tune. Bass change. Yeah. Okay. Ian, do you want to play this bass line? Sure, yeah. And you switch back to this bass because it was a little dicey on the Hofner up high, right? Because you're playing the chords. It's so muddy, Scott's right? going to yeah. accompany me with on the chords. It was so cool. So yeah, let's try this. I mean, even just without the vocal, um, just as a duet, the, the chords and the bass line are so lovely together. Let's try it. One, two, three. That's so cool, isn't it's it? It's so cool. And again, grab that PDF if you haven't, but let's, you know, we will break it down for you here. But what for you are the sort of the key, key parts? Let's play it through yeah. and then you can sort of like, we can talk about what's happening. So it starts off C major, right? Yes. And there's almost this beautiful phrase where he plays that octave, but he's not playing, right? It's It sort of grows Ooh. in dynamic. He's like, you know, yeah, right? Yeah. And then walking up to the five chord. This is so cool because like normally you would go boom because, right. the, because the chords are just like C major. Yep. And then C major, uh, C major seven. Yeah. But Paul doesn't. Paul plays the G, Paul plays the five. So it's a C over G. Yeah. Right? Like a yeah. C major seven over G because Paul's yeah. playing that G in the root. And how cool is that? The bass player decides what the chord is, really. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing, right? Because you're playing a C major we seven. We have ultimate power. <laughs> yes, we do. And <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm thinking about Palpatine. What is oh, it? Unlimited <laughs> power. <laughs> it's like his face is turned into a chicken. <laughs> okay, so we go to, yeah. to, to start off, then we've got the C major. Yeah. Uh, Zoom in. And then he anticipates the C again in this moment, right? So we have little wiggle, then a full walk up to the F major, walks it down, then a triad. Uh, Oh, okay, this, this bit's cool, yes, man. Yes. This is where it gets seriously cool. So I'm playing A minor. Oh, oh 
what is it? 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 Tell me what it is. It's A minor. And then I play an A minor major seven, which oh. sounds like this. Like, and what are you playing there? And I'm just running down the A minor scale. So he's playing an A. Yes. Up okay. to the five, then flat six. Yeah. Okay, so he's actually staying away from the seven then. He's going yes. like five, flat six, five, eleven, three, minus three. Uh, uh, yes. Do, 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 do. While I'm playing this. And then. Oh, and that oh, is so beautiful. So I'm playing a G there. Oh, a G, and I'm playing an A minor. So you're playing the. Whoa, that's cool. Yeah. Should we do all that again? Two, yes, yes. And three, uh, four. Um... And oh, then... oh, sorry. <laughs> right, so he, he comes up to your A, right? So the G, it's like an A minor chord, right? Yeah. Playing A minor over G, but then he walks to get oh, it yeah. before we resolve yeah. to the... Oh, D7, sorry? Yeah, D7. D7. Yeah. Paul plays a D. Yeah, plays a D. Whew. And then to F. And then... Uh, what are you playing there? E flat major. Yeah, E flat. D. And then C major. <laughs> Sounds insane. <laughs> it's it's really, insane. It's really lovely. Yeah. Okay, next one. Okay, so we're going to dig into Come Together. And this is actually a bass line that I played wrong for so many years until I saw your video about it. Yeah, yeah, because loads of people play it wrong. Yeah. They actually put in an extra beat, right? They, yeah. pluck, they pluck it too many times, they make it too complex. And what I did is I listened to an isolated bass part of McCartney playing it, and I was like, huh, he's doing it in a different way. So let's, let's play the thing, we'll play the thing, and then we can uh, get into uh, teaching you it. Show me the bass line. Show me the bass I'm ready for my pick. <laughs> Did you play it with a pick? I mean, I think so. It's pretty punchy yeah. on the isolated that we were checking out. And I believe it is with a pick. And you know this line. You've probably heard it a million times. And I never knew the brilliance of it until actually you broke it down. Yeah. Yeah. Should we show them what everybody does wrong? Yeah, I mean, and it's a small thing, but I love it. I love it because the devil's in the details. The devil is in the details, yeah. dudes. Right? So like if you play, that's what, that's how I used to play it. Exactly. Articulating the slide. Yeah. yeah. Playing the actual, playing that picked note up to the slide. But Paul plays this. There's no- So he only picks it twice, boom, boom. And probably he played third bum, finger. Bum, slide. Yeah. Right, okay, next one. Final one, number five. Number five is Tax Man. A bit of fun. Oh, oh man. so good. <laughs> so and the cool. chord from this, that from the from a guitar perspective. <laughs> is a D7 sharp nine, right? So it's that Hendrix chord, mm -hmm. you know, the purple haze chord. Yes. For all you guitar players out there. But what's going on in the bass line, dude? So the bass line is amazing. All that's happening here is a D and then a double articulation on the octave. Now, this is up for debate because when I first started playing this, I was playing, but I heard and isolated, and Paul is playing a double articulation fast on that upper D. Whoa. Yep. What I'm doing there, and I'm not sure that Paul played it this way, but I'm playing an open D, hammering on from G uh, to A, uh, and then playing the C. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. So, That's right. Sorry. That's right. And you could play that D close, but I like it open. He's doing it open. I don't know. We'd have to ask him. Paul on the channel? <laughs> Come on, Paul. I know. Move it down to C. Same thing. G. 
Let's play that together. One, two, oh, one, two, three.